Cause even in the darkness, cause even in the darkest night, cause even in the darkness, I can see a light. And so can Russia's Yulia Samoylova. She is back for 2018. She's finally gonna get her chance to sing at Eurovision with the song I Won't Break and Honey No You Won't. Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this! This has been one of the most memorable, dramatic, sweeping stories of the past year, all over international media, all over Eurovision fan media. Lots of positive comments, lots of negative comments, and at the center of all of it is Yulia Samoylova. She's dealt with a lot, and so the song I Won't Break in many ways could be seen as autobiographical, telling her story on two levels. One, the recent events that we've just mentioned between Russia and Ukraine, but more broadly her very well-documented health condition, disability, a lifelong struggle that's had complications. She went to Finland at some point last year to have medical treatment. In any case, that is the background. We need to talk about the song. Debin, why don't you kick us off? Well, I think the background is very important in actually forming an opinion on the song. Her well-documented health struggles, this song feels like it's her singing about her perseverance through all these health struggles. I mean, J Julia Samiova, she's a very interesting character. You know, you've got to look at it. I mean, a lot of people look at it in the sort of, like, sort of the macro terms, you know, like the Russia, blah, blah, blah. But really, there is also micro value here where yeah. it's actually about her and what she wants to do her own personal goals and ambitions yes she has to ride the rush's ticket if she wants to sing a eurovision but yeah she wants to sing a eurovision i presume yeah it's and she was denied last year absolutely but what do you think of the song itself musically lyrically musically lyrically when i strip all that back doesn't cut it for me but with the backstory it's very compelling. And it is an overall package, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a you song can't contest. look at Eurovision in isolation. Like, yeah. oh, just the music, or just the artist, or just the composition, or just the melody, or just the wardrobe. Mm. Everything, you know, it, it builds a whole picture. It does, and I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised. Flame is Burning was very much a throwback to another era. There was merit in that song based on the narrative, but as a song, one could argue justifiably that it wasn't necessarily the strongest. However, it had a much stronger melody than what we Oh no, got. I disagree, because this falls into my ears. Even oh. in the darkness, even in the darkness. This is much more contemporary. This is much more 2018. Deep in the night. That was 1978. I like that song, but that, that was much more old school. I think this song is contemporary and modern with great production. It's, got, it's like a mid-tempo power ballad with electro flair. Um, I know that one of the songwriters, or two of the songwriters, live in Germany. They've, of course, worked with some Russian greats as well. So Alexei Golubev is behind deal. the staging. Big deal. You know, he staged for Polina Gagarina's Million Voices. Yeah, and also, if you look in this video, there's a lot of thought here. She's going back to her edgy styling. This is actually the real Julia. This is how she always styles herself. Flame is burning with someone else trying to, you know, make her look like, I don't know, she didn't look like herself. Whereas here, she's got the piercing, she's got the bright purple lip. This is who she is. She's a bit edgy. Go on her Instagram. She loves makeup, she loves beauty, and they're really bringing that into focus. I love the final shot of her becoming the mountain. In the clouds. Yeah, it's very <laughs> Kim Jong-il. I was of, just... Do you know what I mean? Like, it reminds me of North Korean propaganda, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean it's visually striking and arresting. I want to read you the lyrics. When it comes to emotions from the deepest of oceans, coming straight from my heart, I won't give in to the motions. Those so-called broken wings are soaring to the sky. I've flown with kings and queens with freedom in their eyes. I won't break. I won't break. This is organic to her. She can relate to these lyrics. I think there's some enunciation issues at the Oh, moment. major, major, major enunciation she issues. She can work on that. Uh, honey. She can work on that. 
it's been two years. Well, no, I don't think we should, you know, kind of write her off just because at the moment she's, look, we don't speak Russian. I want to hear you sing a song in Russian even after two months of practice. If I had three minutes coming up before me in 2019, trust me, <laughs> I would I, I would speak any language. I would speak Sanomi from Belgium. <laughs> okay, Spasiba Bajasta. Listen, she will nail the lyrics by the time your version comes around. Some people have said, well, let's actually read the comments. Let, let's read the comments, which will get to the heart of the matter. Julie says, a beautiful and brave entry. Can't wait to see what they do for the live performance. As you mentioned with Leonid, Leonid it's going to be, there's promise. But, c c c with a caveat, Julia Samuelova doesn't write her songs. It's entirely backing vocals and auto-tune. I've got to keep it real. I I'm, all for, I'm mm. all for the whole thing, but ultimately, as well, like, like I said to mm. you, with the backstory, it's very compelling and it moves me forward. If I have to judge it strictly and very critically, this doesn't doesn't make the cut. In any case, the thing is, people judge the performance as a whole. So yes, with backing vocalists, it doesn't matter if she's singing the majority uh, of the song or not. It, it doesn't it, actually it, matter. It's BV all the way, babe. She's it, going straight to the final. I'm sorry. She's going straight to the it, final. It is <laughs> literally autotune right from start to finish. I'm backing it's vocals. It's a music. We haven't heard the live version. Of course it's remastered. This isn't a live version. In any case, we move on to the next commenter. Lika says, I disliked her song and overall vocal abilities so much last year, so my expectations for this year were non-existent. Boy, did she prove me wrong. What a good, lovely song. Amen. You won't break, Lika. You won't break. <laughs> All right. Loiseau says, this is better than what was cooked up for Yulia last year, but it is definitely not a winner. Very average to poor song. Russia can make so much better. I don't think there's anything wrong with having backing vocalists. Many people do it. Everyone does it. More power to her. It's a if stage show. If we had show. gone to Eurovision, we would have done it. But it doesn't... Uh. In fact, I wish many of the singers would use more backing vocalists. <laughs> because often, the backing vocalists, they can be a bit stronger than the lead vocalist. Fact. Agreed. But then you throw auto-tune into the mix. And... They're not going to auto-tune the performance in Lisbon, Debbie. Uh. You can't do it. It's illegal. All right. And something else we should just bring up which is in the comment section, is some people say, oh, Russia has a very poor track record with serving the needs of people living with disabilities, and perhaps there's some kind of hypocrisy going on. I think that you need, yes, it's true that there is a major issue, not just in Russia, but all over the world, of a track record of, you know, access to education, access to all sorts of things for people living with disabilities. But the important takeaway for me is that even if that's true, there will be people who see Yulia and feel inspired by her, and that's so And progress so has to start from somewhere. I'm sorry. You know, you could just keep, keep harking onto the past. There comes a point where change needs to take effect. And you've got to start from somewhere. Yeah. And I think besides all that, she's also a performer, she's a singer. There comes a point where she feels like, oh, I actually want to represent my country for Eurovision. Yeah. And she shouldn't be denied simply because she's in a wheelchair. Completely. I'm not so sure about what the readers are talking about. I haven't literally tuned into that negativity. But, you know, you can't judge like that. No, no, because to so many people she will mean so much. Oh, absolutely. And that has so much weight. You know, because if she wasn't going to Eurovision, they would still have those problems in Russia. At least now she's going to Eurovision, so maybe it'll raise awareness to some extent. And just to add as well, William, you bring yourself into what you do, into your art. When yeah. we discuss here, we bring ourselves. We, we don't discuss beforehand. We're authentic in how we are. You know, mm. uh, even when people don't like oh, it. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Poland 2015, classic case in point. It was her backstory. It was it was what happened to her that she brought to life. So you can't really hate on Yulia for kind of... Um, Living her life, pursuing her dreams, being ambitious. And being authentic to where she's at and what, what her hopes and dreams are. And if she won't break, don't break her! <laughs> <laughs> now, Deppin, Russia is, of course, competing in the second semifinal in the first half, I believe. Absolutely. And who else is in the first half? Uh, we've got Denmark in there. Serbia, Romania, Australia, Norway, Moldova, San Marino, and the Netherlands in the first half. Mm. In the second half, you've got Montenegro, Sweden, Hungary, Malta, Latvia, Georgia, Poland, Slovenia, and Ukraine. She's going through. I mean, Russia has historical, you know, historically strong voting power, and also I think she has a very, you know, a competitive song actually for this semi-final, so I think she'll sail through to the final. And it's touching. And like I said, th there's a story, there's a story to it. And when you add all of that together with this amazing Alexei, the stage yeah. director, I think she's got a really good shot at advancing.
story staging diaspora. Our girl's ready. <laughs> That's what we think. What do you think? Are you happy that Yulia is finally having her moment in the sun? Do you think Russia will sail through to the final? And what do you make of the song itself? Let us know here on Weeby Blogs. Before we close this video, one thing I have to really say I applaud Russia for was that she was confirmed that, okay, if she can't go to Ukraine, she would come back yeah. and do the next Eurovision. It wasn't BS. It wasn't. It wasn't. They kept their word, they kept their promise, and how many countries would have actually done that? Mm. And she's back here, and I think that's a really strong point, that they're committed to her as an artist, committed to her as a performer. She's not a gimmick, she's not a puppet. She's an artist, a, a disabled yeah. artist, who wants to perform and will perform and will slay, and she won't break! <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook. And we won't break. See you later. Bye. Bye.